Hello and welcome to another FS Elite video. My name is Callum and today I have two huge boxes just turned up to my door and, well, as you can see, they are the Honeycomb Aeronautical new products. So here we have the Alpha Flight Controls XPC and here, probably the one most of you have been waiting for for the longest time now, is the Honeycomb Aeronautical Charlie Rudder Pedals. So what we're going to do in this video today is we're going to unbox both of these brand new products sent to me from Honeycomb themselves way ahead of their release uh, later this summer and autumn and I'm going to show you exactly what is inside of each of the boxes. So stay tuned and stick around. So we're going to start with the Honeycomb Alpha flight controls first and unbox this. Many of you will probably be somewhat familiar with what the controls actually look like, but I'm going to take you through some of the key differences with this brand new version of the, uh, the Alpha Flight Controls. So, let's just put this to one side for just a moment and we're going to start unboxing the Alpha Flight Controls XPC. So with the Charlie Rudder pedals now out of the way temporarily, and we will unbox those very soon, it's time to see what is inside of the Alpha Flight Controls XPC box. So, if we just take off that sleeve, put that to one side, and we'll see, there's already this kind of greeny colored, um, which if you're an Xbox user, it will be very familiar to you. And I think that is one of the biggest changes with the uh, new flight controls from Honeycomb, is the fact that these are now Xbox compatible, right out of the box. So, opening up the lid, we immediately get struck with this, which is the Honeycomb Flight Control Xbox Hub. Now, what this device does is it actually enacts as a um, kind of a centralized hub, as the name would imply, for other products that you might have from Honeycomb. So if you already own the original Alpha Flight Controls or even the Bravo, Bravo uh, Throttle Quadrant, then you can use this device to connect them all up and plug them into your Xbox. Now, this was a press unit, so I'm not sure at this point in time if this is included with all XPC variants of the Alpha Flight Controls. I will double check and drop a comment in the description, but it, it was included in this box and it does allow you, as I said, to connect everything up. But what is important to note is that you do not need this in order to use the new controls as it's already built in. So let's unpack this further. So we have here the instruction manual, which is fairly basic. We also have a couple of cables. So we have the connection between the unit and the yoke itself. And we also have here a long USB type C cable. Underneath that, we have the suction pad and sticky plastic stuff, um, and this is the clamp, so this will then slot the controls on top, and then we'll be able to clamp this to our desk or table or other um, place that you might put the yoke. Under the phone. And we have the bike controls, which I will show you in just a second. But first, there are two more things in this box, and that is the clamps themselves. So both of these clamps will quite simply be attached to the base unit so you can easily slot your flight controls on top. So with that aside, let's take a closer look at the yoke itself. So here it is, the Alpha Flight Controls yoke. Now, immediately, you're probably thinking, well, this is very, very similar and absolutely in no way different to the original flight controls that, um, that Honeycomb Aeronautical actually put out originally. However, there are some really important differences to note immediately from the outside. Firstly is, if I just turn this slightly, the Xbox controls down here. Now, as I said, this has been designed to immediately be able to plug into your Xbox console and immediately go flying. So we have the home button and we also have the start and uh, option and share buttons as well, all of which you'll find 
on your Xbox controller as of today. There are some other um, key differences as well, which probably isn't going to come up very well in video, especially this one, I'll have to zoom in. But there is um, A, B, X and Y, and also L, R, L, B and R, B, etc. So basically all of the controls you would get from a normal Xbox controller have been semi-mapped out here on these controls as well. So if you're unfamiliar with, or you're familiar, I should say, with the Xbox controls and want to apply it to the Honeycomb uh, yoke, then you'll be immediately be able to see exactly which button does what. Now, of course, in the flight sim, you can change those controls to your liking, but it's good to see that it's immediately available for those who do need it. There are some other cool differences as well. So perhaps something I am very fond of, and regardless of whether you're a PC or Xbox user, um, the new controls actually have a nice spring-loaded uh, ignition start. So when you hit the start switch or flick it around to the start switch, it becomes spring-loaded, just like in most real aircraft. So that's a very nice difference. Of course, there are other differences as well, which are a little bit more subtle. So you have a nice smooth uh, finish, which I actually very much prefer compared to the original. And the material itself just feels a much more smoother and actually a much higher quality than I remember from the original controls as well. On the inside of the unit as well, there are now hall, sensor, hall effect sensors. So actually you get a much higher resolution in terms of the, um, the sensors inside, which allow for much more precise movements when you move the yoke. And there are a couple of other changes as well under the hood, which will make a massive difference to your flying experience. Of course, <coughs> all of these changes have come at a little bit of an extra cost, and also the rise in production rates and also other factors as well, has meant that this unit is a little bit pricier than the original one that came before it. But that's not to say that those who do own the original will be left out, because as I said, you can use the Xbox hub to be able to connect it up, but you just won't have some of those other changes as well. Now, that is all I'm going to talk about for this unit at this stage in time, because I, I've literally not used it yet. This is brand new, fresh out of the factory, but do expect a full review from us in the near future. But let's put this away for now and let us check out the new Honeycomb Aeronautical Charlie Rudder Pedals. So here they are, the Honeycomb Aeronautical Charlie Rudder Pedals. Now, as you can see, the box is huge and ultimately the product inside is also pretty hefty as well. So here's the yoke, just for a little bit of size comparison. So as you can see, the yoke, even when we fully stretch out the, uh, the yoke itself, the box is still maybe two, three inches longer that way. And equally, pretty much the same for the height as well. So what you can see is quite clearly a massive box and inside is quite clearly a massive product. So enough uh, size comparisons, let's actually open up and see what's inside. The Honeycomb Aeronauts called Charlie Rudder Pedals are Xbox compatible. However, you will need to use the Xbox hub in order to connect them to the console itself. It's also compatible with Windows 10, 11, and also Mac. So basically any simulator on any of those platforms are compatible with this. So that includes MSFS, P3D, and also X-Plane 11, and most likely X-Plane 12 as well. So <laughs> let's open up the box. Okay, so here is the box. Let's open it up. And first thing we see is, of course, the big padding, which is great. It means it's nice and protected. Let's set that to one side. And on top, another USB Type-C cable. So if you're a fan of them, then perfect. Um, and then we have now the rudder pedals themselves. So I'm gonna get these out as carefully as I can, and then I will talk to you once I've got them out of the box. Okay, here they are, the Honeycomb Aeronautical Charlie Rudder Pedals. 
<laughs> I mean, they're big. What else can we say at this point in time? They certainly have a footprint um, for the floor, and in fact, on my table as well. So let me just bring the yoke back. So you remember how big the yoke was compared to the box, but how does it compare to the pedals themselves? Now, just kind of eyeballing this right now, if we fully extend it back out, I would say in terms of the depth, they're probably about the same. Again, I haven't measured these for accuracy, but purely just from a visual standpoint. And what about this way? Let's have a look. Uh, and they, the, the, the pedals are a little bit wider, I would say, than the uh, yoke unit, even when it's fully extended as well. So yeah, quite a hefty unit. And in terms of height, obviously a lot smaller in terms of height coming up to about here. So imagine if you want to just measure this yourself at home and you have one of these, then you can kind of use this section as the basis for the height itself. But let's get rid of this for now turn our attention to the pedals themselves. So what we have here is pedals that are made, made completely of metal. So nice and sturdy, very, very strong tension here and on here. And also for the back and forth movement. Very, very, very sturdy stuff there. Let's just turn these on their side so you can get a good side profile. And yes, they are pretty heavy. They're about, I would say eight, maybe 10 kilos. Um, and this is the side profile. So again, nothing much really to see. I mean, pedals are pedals at the end of the day. Um, and that's exactly what we've got here. And turn it around again. And we have here at the back, a tension knob. So we can adjust the tension and also Honeycomb's famous LED lighting section. So when these are plugged in, you get the nice red glow from the front panel, which I'll show you in just a second. Turn these around again. And again, just a side profile. Nothing really to talk about. Um, there is this kind of nice textured effect here, which I imagine is really good for grip, especially when you've got your feet um, sat on top of them, especially for maybe the longer flights. You've also got some grip on the, uh, the heel here of the pedal. Um, and you've also got some nice text in where it says honeycomb aeronautical as well. So there's plenty of nice little touches I can see here. And then of course we have the honeycomb kind of um, pattern and design here. And this is what I was mentioning earlier about the, the LED lights. Once you plug this in, you can adjust how bright this goes. And this is a nice honeycomb red. Um, so all in all, very um, simplistic looking design. Very, um, compared to some other pedals I, I'm aware of, they are quite um, shallow, um, but considerably wider and also longer as well. So yeah, I haven't had an opportunity to really test these just yet. This video is purely just a quick unboxing and overview of the pedals and the XPC um, Alpha flight controls as well. But now it's time for me to go and try these bad boys out and then come up with a review, which I will be posting on FSD in the very near future. But that does everything for today. I'm gonna to just leave some more shots at the end of this video of um, the units themselves. But thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please do like, leave a comment, and also subscribe for more fantastic flight simulation content coming in the future. But that's it for me for now. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you guys on fsd.net.